Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Henry, specifically on the offensive side of the ball. Super excited for this. We're taking a look at just kind of how he goes about his uh, play calling offensively. I thought this would be an interesting uh, kind of film analysis to do. Uh, this is going to be his game against Drini. And really the question we're asking is not only what does he call, but why does he call what he calls? So I'm going to take a stab at explaining that in this video. Now we know the first drive, Drini uh, basically drives down and then he is going to get three. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this a little bit so we make sure uh, we can get back over here to where Henry gets the ball, his first drive. So like I said, uh, Drini is basically able to go down. He's going to get three. And we're going to get into this. So first play uh, out of the gate here, Henry is going to run the ball. Now the main purpose of this, in my opinion, is real quick. So a couple things that are going to kind of set the stage. So first and foremost, Drini is in a different defense than most people in this tournament. He is in 3-3-5 odd. You're typically going to get a pressure that looks something like this. So it's very similar to Dollar. This guy will occasionally come. A lot of times this guy will actually be basically uh, bluff blitzed and he'll kind of become a hook curl um, or a three-rec hook zone defender. Now, what uh, Henry does here is pretty much what every good Madden player should do in this situation. As you can see, he didn't want to run uh, risk of fumble, so the ball is right here. So it's in the middle of the field. It's not on a hash. Normally, the ball would be on one of those hash marks. So the purpose of this call is to try to run the ball in a way that we can get on a hash mark and then we have uh, we can set up our routes accordingly because if I run, let's say, a streak, a corner, and a flat, this outside third defender has different principles than he does. Like if the ball is here, he'll have he'll play different principles. So typically he'll actually play this corner route. If the ball's over here, he'll definitely play this corner route. And then if the ball is over here, then now all of a sudden he's going to have to take the streak over the top. So. That those are some of the reasons as to why uh, as to why we're going to run the ball first play. So that kind of hopefully explains that. So here, main purpose is to get on a hash. Now what you'll see is he does actually end up for whatever reason uh, getting on or staying in the middle of the field. So he's all right. So Henry runs the ball again, and now he is uh, still in the middle of the field. So he's really trying to get to a hash mark, not able to. First and ten situation here. Ends up running the ball again, and again now finally gets to a hash mark. He actually, I think, purposely juked for that. So that's exactly what Henry wants to do. So notice that he has not attempted a pass um, until he got his his uh, um, the ball closer to a hash mark. So now, coming out here, I want to look at this combo first play. So um, this is essentially a one-play touchdown attempt. Now, in, in general, I think it's important to ask, why would you attempt this concept? So uh, first and foremost, this is the coverage that Henry is looking for here. Typically, this is going to be an outside third. And then from there, it's going to be a couple different combinations that could be potentially possible. But a lot of times, generally, this guy is going to be in a middle third. What this does is now they have we have three defenders we can put in the coverage to the right. And then on the left side, typically, you're going to get from Drini at least a coverage that looks kind of like this. So uh, as you can see, it's a cover three to the right, a cover two to the left. And then the user is Harold Carmichael, and his primary responsibility is going to be in this right side seam. And occasionally, we'll probably take a corner route over here to the right. So what Henry's attempting to do, also game management and game situation-wise, why does he go to this play? Well, he just got a stop on Drini. So if he could get a big play, i.e. this post, um, a lot of momentum would, would basically continue to swing in his direction is, is what I would anticipate. So um, the purpose of the flat here is this flat will kind of hold this third and the third will play a little bit more like down. And then the trail route ideally is designed to take the user over here to have to defend that area so that then the ball could be thrown up and over the top. So that's kind of the purpose of that play and why he calls it. Now, please take note of where uh, please take note of where the ball is. So this bomb works best when it is running from the wide side to the short side. So that's really important as well. And you'll see this later on. But as you see, now had he waited on this, if we look at this real quick, so... Okay, so from a read progression, I do think it's important to point this out as well. 
I like to try to think, you know, where do the reads go? So the first read here is we're looking out here. Can we throw this? Now, off rip, we know that this guy is clearly in a cloud flat. Now, the fact that this guy is in a cloud flat means there's really only one of two options. But typically, this guy is in a third over here to the right side. And we know that this could be a potential bomb. Now, so I think in off rip initially, the first thing is we're looking out here. What What is this corner doing? And he backs off here, okay? So because that corner backs off uh, in that situation, then what you're going to see... All right, so basically what you're going to see here is at this point now, what are the progressions and what is really Henry looking for here? So we see the user, see how the user kind of jumps to this post route? That's kind of a cue, a visual cue to Henry. So as he's looking at this, again, I, th I would assume we're looking out here. And then from there, we're really probably progressing to see what is this guy doing? Is he going to the middle of the field or is he kind of flailing out here to the right? If he flails out to the right or does like an inside quarter type of deal, then this route is now dead. But as you can see, he goes to the middle of the field. So now this route is still in play. However, the user is there. So now our eyes essentially are looking at the user. Does the user take the post or does the user take the, the little underneath check down route? It's kind of the main thing we're looking at. So as we look at this run a little bit more, you see this movement from the user. See how he's kind of getting some verticality to his, his depth. Again, this is a cloud. This is cloud, at least of some sort. Notice that this guy on the right is staying down on this flat. So at this point, we see that our little drag is coming open right over here. So again, I think as soon as he sees this guy kind of get some depth with that poster out, his eyes are no, this is kind of a dead read to him now. And we're really either throwing this or we're throwing this across. And we know that this is running into uh, where his user defender actually is. So we'll continue to run this through. You see right about here. And as you see, now, had he waited on this, there's literally no pressure here. Had he waited on this, this might have been a touchdown over the top. But Henry takes a conservative play right here, gets easy yards, and um, is going to be able to going to be able to move upfield. Okay, so that's that purpose of that play call. Now, so we kind of take a little bit of a shot play there on second and nine, get a nice little check down, we get upfield, and now we're on the left hash mark. So again, the the whole purpose of this film room that I wanted to try to accomplish is to try to understand like why. Um, Henry calls what he calls and what his progressions actually are. I think that this can help just as much as anything. Now, right here, we go to another run play. I'm not sure why he runs the ball there. Um, I'm, I'm just not sure why. Uh, I think could be a variety of different reasons. Maybe just trying to, you know, stay conservative. I don't know. But we are going to go to a pass here. So we go to this play. So uh, basically the route combination here is we have a flat. We have a little pivot route. Okay, and then we have a tight end crosser, a clear out, and then we're blocking this running back. Now, the primary purpose that Henry is uh, of the blocked running back here is really to just make sure that this cannot kill us, right? That he doesn't get killed with pressure, and it gives him a chance to make a read. So, again, this flat, and what we've been getting a lot of is like a cover two hard flat over here. And so, what you'll see this is a third, a third, probably a half. This guy has almost always either been on a bluff blitz of some sort. He's not on a vert hook hardly ever. I'm almost positive he's almost always on a bluff blitz. So this is where you get this little zig because the beauty is the defender we're going to put in conflict here is we're either going to put this guy in conflict, typically this guy, um, or this guy, either one. But essentially this guy is going to pull this guy to him, okay? So then we get this little pivot route, which where we're really wanting to throw this is in this little square right here in the window, okay? So we'll take a look at Drini's coverage post snap. So coverage post snap, we have a third, a third, a half, and then we have that hard flat there, and then look at this defender. See how he's kind of drifting to the middle? And then you have this little curl flat over here. Again, user's in the middle field, user has to make a decision, and basically we're looking if the user takes the crosser, which is probably very likely, then we're gonna have this little pivot right in this little uh, pocket that we were talking about. So if you think about it, if you just wanna drop up, draw up where we're attacking, we're really attacking these two primary pockets. Again, if you wanted to, you could throw that crosser right here, or you could throw it over here as well. But let's let this run a little bit more. So you see how 
again, see how this guy's drifting in the middle of the field? So right here, at this point, user has committed to crosser. There is, look at all this space that him, he has created just with this route combination. This is wide open. It's a beautiful play. Love it. And we're able to take easy yardage right there. So, okay, so the first couple of plays, essentially the first two pass plays that, that Henry has ran, and this is what's important for our purposes, the first two pass plays that Henry has ran really have attacked this, this, this section right here with potential to attack over in this pocket, right? Those are kind of the two main areas. So now he's going to go to trips tight end. Now his route combination out of trips tight end, as you can see, is we have a clear out streak up the seam. We have a C route over here to the right. And then I'm pretty sure he's actually gonna leave this drag and this streak he is. So what's the purpose of this drag? Well, based off the way Draney's been playing defense, there's really been no one in this box at all, right? And then the other purpose is, because what we really wanna do is we really wanna throw the ball kind of over in this little pocket is probably what I would be assuming. So as Henry is reading this, I would assume here, and again, these are all just guesses. I'm not 100% sure, but this is just what I would, you know, my knowledge of the game and, um, and watching a lot of Henry this year this is what I would be looking at. So here off rip, you could probably throw this, but Julius Peppers is 6'7", right? So we probably don't want to throw that. So he's going to look, okay, defender's in this grass, so now I want to come over here and see what's going on. So he sees, okay, user is here to the left side. Once he sees this, now the main route and the main defender is this guy right here. We are just looking at this corner. If the corner drops back like he's going to run a third, we know from our lab work that that is going to be open on the right side. So you'll see here. He looks left. Okay, that's dead. Look at this. And, and again, Draney's probably assuming this is a tight end post, okay, which would have been good defense, but he's a streak. This guy comes underneath. Let's take a look at this real quick. And again, the coverage is almost identical to the previous coverage. It's just Draney is now using Gronkowski instead of Har uh, Carmichael. Half, cloud, or uh, soft squad, or hard flat. Third, this might actually be a quarter, if I'm being honest. It might be a quarter. Uh, that might be his counter to the bomb that uh, Henry was running but as you can see this is kind of muddy because of this user here but this is going to be wide open over here on the right hand side so you'll see here again go now right here as you see great job by Henry getting out of the pocket and you see this massive amount of space that he's created uh, to the right hand side and able to spin out and get a touchdown so on the first drive, really, he attacked, honestly, kind of very similar spaces um, on the field in very different ways, uh, which is really, really important to take note of. Now, the second drive, Henry actually is going to get a fumble. Uh, he's actually going to get Drini to fumble. So he causes a fumble with a strip. What's he do first play here? He goes right to the run, right to the run. Now, why would he go to the run in that situation? In my opinion, he's probably doing that because of this clock, uh, because Henry does get balled half. So if he can use this uh, two minutes, 50 seconds, it'd be perfect because then he could use the halftime as an extra defender. Now we'll see it ends up playing out a little bit differently than that. He does go back to this, um, this play out of bunch strong. Okay. Let's take a look at this and okay. So what's again, this is just super, super interesting to me, but again, why do you call this play? You don't see Henry run this a lot. We actually see Wesley do kind of a similar combination, but this guy would be on a wheel. But essentially what we have is we have a streak, we have a corner, and then we have a little flat. So where are the spaces we're attacking? We're really attacking here. We're attacking here. We're attacking here. And then where do we want to throw this drag? We probably want to throw the drag right in here. And really this tight end post, honestly, is probably just to hold the user over here to the left side from what I would see. And maybe give us an option if they run, you know, man-to-man -man coverage. So what is the predictable coverage from Drini? We're going to go cloud, half, third, third, purple. And then we got our user kind of midpoint in between the drag and the post. So if all goes as according to plan, you're either going to hit this corner or if this guy goes back to the corner, 
then you're going to hit this running back. So really, again, based off everything that we've seen so far, the main defender we're looking at or the main guy that's going to influence decisions is really going to be this slot corner. Does he go back? Does he get hard to the flat? Does he sit in the middle to take the drag? Those are kind of the post-snap questions. So you'll see here, right, snap. Okay, now this is where I think we all can learn from everybody. And it's, again, it's very important to ask questions uh, because the better questions you ask, the better answer you get. So obviously, you know, Henry's one of the best Madden players in the world. What I'm interested in is, okay, so if you look at this, if you look at this, um, this defender, he's, he's going back, as you can see, off rip, he's going back to the right. You know this is probably what you're getting here. And then on the left side, it might be a third and a flat. But really, it's kind of going to essentially play the same. Now, Drini also only sends these four guys over here. So this guy is now in the middle of the field, which frees up the user to be able to do a lot of different things. All right? So my question is, why do we not throw this? Because you'll see he'll get this cut. If he throws this right here, you can get up field for about 10 to 15 yards. And I know this is super nitpicky, and there's probably a reason. Probably the reason why, if I was guessing, was to see if this guy would clear this out and we could throw this corner over here. That would probably be what I would I would assume. Because the way this is being usered here and just where the zones are, you're not really going to throw this, right? There's two defenders in that space. The user is right here. You're probably not going to throw that either. So again, at this point, the read is either this guy or this guy. Now, the corner will be open as long as this R1 streak clears him out. And I think because Henry didn't put him on a fade, as you see right here, you can throw this corner. And really, I mean, possession catches on the sideline. What Henry, Henry ends up doing is just checking it down to the running back, taking the easy yards. I feel like that was just a little bit of an awkward play call and a little bit late. But again, so far in this uh, game, the first couple of drives, Henry has kind of attacked the same space on the field consistently. It's really been the right side of the field. So we see here right hash mark. He's going to flip his bunch. And I think we're finally, okay, so same thing. So this is smash return. We're going to get a clear out here from the, the solo wide receiver. So again, as we read this and we think through the, the play call, why are we blocking the running back? Well, Hen Henry is anticipating that we're in a third down situation, okay? So Drini's probably trying to get a stop. So Drini's probably going to blitz. So he's anticipating this right here. This is what he's anticipating, okay? So that, that, that kind of like general, I think, pre-snap planning now tells us what we're going to do with our routes. So if you think about it, the only people that can be in coverage is this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and then, of course, the user and this guy. So... We're, so we have two people to the left side, which is super important. So what can they do? Well, what we're probably going to get, okay, this is just a general, we're probably going to get a cloud and a half, probably, okay? So where are they not covering? They're not going to be able to cover in this section of the field. So this is the purpose of this mass return because we're going to throw that right where the blitz comes from. Okay, as you can see, this would be where the blitz would come from, and we would basically be throwing it right in behind the blitz. That's un, that's an option. Now, obviously, we have a peak here, but we pretty much anticipate this guy is going to go with the streak. So now, it means this defender gets put into conflict as well. So what we'll see is we're pretty much anticipating that he will probably drop to the flat. If he doesn't drop to the flat, let's say he drops to the curl flat like he's been, this little tight end drag is going to be right wide open in this little pocket. So then from there again, this is the this is the anticipated blitz. This defender, I mean, you really, if you really wanted to, you could do something like this. This would be pretty bad defense against Bunch generally. But if he knew what Henry was calling, again, it's interesting to me that another this is yet another play that Henry's called here in the first half where we're, the majority of the routes are going to the right. Every route's going to the rider eventually. So kind of interesting. But essentially, the user is going to have to take this post. And then you can throw this. If you look at these windows, you can attack 
here, here, and then really kind of anywhere in this little underneath section with that return route. So let's take a look at the post snap coverage. Okay, here's what we get. Blitz, 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 blitz. So Drainy sends six people. I will say I actually don't hate the coverage. It's kind of what I said. We get a third. We get a third. And then I'm not really sure. I think this is like a cloud. And then here. So now user is on an island underneath. And so here the user just takes the first read. Now, why does Drini take the first read? Well, he sent six people. So he's hoping that somebody would get home. They don't. So to get a clear picture here. You see, look at all the space. Wide open, easy read, and a great little way to keep the drive alive. So as far as why did Henry call that play specifically, I think he wanted to block his running back. Um, so he wanted a combo that attacked it heavily underneath. I, again, I, I'm not sure exactly why Henry um, attacks to the right side of the screen so much. I think that's the more important question. Uh, here, another thing that we're going to see. And again, it does kind of go with the coverage that we are anticipating. We're anticipating this. And this has pretty much been... This has been the coverage every single time. A third, a quarter, or a third, either way. And then a curl flat or he flat out blitzes. One of those three. One of those things. But essentially, this guy has been in this quarter all day long, right? Well, we're to the wide side of the field here in gun bunch. So we have our bunch, or I'm sorry, we, we have our bunch to the left. Which means the C route is running to the wide side of the field. And Henry knows that if this guy is in a curl flat, he has to take the running back and match him. And so it's going to leave this, uh, it's going to leave this C route really open right in this little pocket. Now he also hedges his bet really well because he runs this out of double post and he has this wheel route here. He uses a Hara master post. And again, what are we in? What are we trying to attack here? Well, essentially here, it really comes down to what does this defender do on the left. So let's run the play, snap it, and we see, okay. So what we see here is we. it looks like a half, and I'm not really sure what this guy is. I, I, for lack of, like I said, I just, I'm just not sure what, I'm really not sure here. But, but basically, again, once, once Henry looks, okay, so what, what's, this, what's the read off the snap? It's probably, we're probably looking here first okay more than likely so henry looks to his left he sees this guy is is over here okay so immediately we are really primarily trying to work over here as our primary side so he sees that and then he sees this as you see pepper is going into that purple this is automatically at this point right now i would venture to say henry knows he's throwing that touchdown to the right literally right here so again one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. Three seconds later, he actually ends up throwing it. But I'm almost positive he knew he was probably throwing that way, way more early on in the in the play. So now uh, this next drive, Drini's able to get downfield, able to end up, I think, getting, um, getting some points here. I think he gets seven. So now uh, Henry Henry's ball... And again, let's take a look at this from a game management perspective. Let me back this up. And this is where things get really interesting to me. Um, it, it, just really interesting, Henry's play call. So we're in the middle of the field. Now, I understand why we're doing this. Henry only has one timeout. So we're not going to run the ball uh, to take more time off the clock. So he goes to this what I would call a constraint play. It's really just a play that you can run regardless of where you're at on the hash mark. And it's this dagger play out of Bunch Nasty. Now, for the life of me, I'm not sure why this is the main play that Henry is running. And I, that's why I'm kind of partially why I wanted to do this video to try to see what he sees. But basically what we have here is we're, we're now, so again, majority of, of route combos that we've ran up until this point, have really attacked the right side with something kind of in this section over here, okay? Now what we're going to start doing offensively is kind of a shift in the way he's going to approach his offense. And I think it has to do with this guy being in a cloud flat. 
is we're going to try to now attack over in this space. So dagger, we get a clear out streak. This guy's on a crosser. This guy's on a little underneath drag, which will also be thrown here. And then we have this little, this little uh, tight end kind of trailing in route. So again, coverage third, third. I, I think this is an, this might be an outside third. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure it looks and eh, right there kind of looks like a deep half. But anyways, what you'll see is really we're looking for the, the crosser to the drag to the tight end. He throws it away here. And like I said, this is where I just, I just, he goes to this play a, a ton um, over the course of the next couple plays. I think he goes right back to it. What do you see? Same kind of thing. So again, he's really just trying to go through his reads. Streak. He sees a streak. If you just watch this, this guy is being used by the user, is being defended by the user. This guy's running himself into coverage. So that window to the right is going to be open. Henry takes it. Able to get some nice yardage, jukes him out, gets up field with Kelsey. And I, again, if I'm in Henry's shoes, really I'm trying to get three, maybe seven if possible. But if he gets three, he's going to be able to go up um, by two possessions out of half. Now this, this is why. So then out of a hurry up situation, we get this double corner play. So again, this is just interesting to me, but he just attacked the same exact look really really in these main areas, right? So now in a no huddle situation, he comes back and he's going to go double corner with a backside little uh, check down route. So where do these areas, where is he attacking? He's really attacking here, kind of in these general areas. Again, if we get a third, a third, and this, then as you can see, the main defender we're putting in the conflict is that outside third defender. So we'll see here right off rip and look at the coverage. Now here, uh, Drini starts to do some stuff that's kind of interesting. So you get this little flat. It's kind of what we got in all game, bluff blitz. I mean, it's really been the same adjustments all game. But then we get this outside third, inside third, purple. He ends up playing coverage. He only sends three, and he mans up the tight end. As you can see, man's up this tight end. Now, right here, if you look at this, you can throw this. This is wide open here to the right side. I mean, it's 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 just it's literally open. He throws it, gets the blue pass, and honestly, somehow the ball goes out of bounds. I don't know if it's a bad free form or it, it wasn't a bad release. He got the perfect accuracy, so just kind of interesting. So second and ten. So he just attacked to the right. Now he's going to come back, attack to the left, almost throw a user lurk. And right here, again, this is pretty much the same uh, adjustments. Again, that we're just so we send one, two, three, and then we get some interesting stuff here. But basically, he mans up here, mans up here, and really, Henry thinks he's going to continue over here because there ain't nobody over there to defend that drag. Whereas he does have this manned up. Right here, it's open, but again, he eh, right here it doesn't look as open. And, and, and I think Henry was honestly just a little bit late there, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, I just don't know why he called that play. That's what I want to know. That's what I find so hard sometimes to figure out. Why do, we, why do we call that specifically? I think it's because of this guy. I think it's because this guy's on a cloud. And because of that, it's an easier throw to throw this. Because really, it, it, if you think about it from an ability perspective, this defender over here is your KO. This guy's your KO. This guy probably has deep KO. He probably doesn't have flat KO. And again, Dre might have his abilities different, but you see here again, this is going to clear that half out. So he's going to take him out of the picture. This guy will never get the depth to defend this deep crosser. So the only way this can be defended is if either A, it's manned up, or B, as you see here, Drini's user is going to it. But when his user goes to it, it leaves all this space underneath, and we can throw the tight end for easy yardage. So those are some different tactics that uh, you see here. 
first and 10 back to it again like i said it's just and again i just think it's because of that cloud i i i I watched this game back several times and I'm just not, I'm not seeing, I'm not understanding exactly why other than it's two people in coverage. You only have two people in coverage over here. Whereas over here you have, you know, three, a lot of times, maybe even if you put the linebackers out, you have four or five. So I think it's just, we have a significant numbers advantage to be able to try to throw the ball over here. Again, Henry's anticipating this guy's blitzing. Well, where, what, what side of the field is he on? He's on the left side. So you have everybody on the left is, is basically, you know, trying to blitz here in the concept. So it's just really hard for the user to guard all three of these routes. And you're able to block the running back. So this is essentially, if you think about dagger, dagger is essentially um, smash return. It's very similar. All right, so now... Red zone situation for Henry. He goes to his vertical play. Again, not 100% sure why. I think it's just based off tendency. What did you do last time? This guy's on a third. This guy's on a purple. This guy's on a third. So because of that, these guys are blitzing. This Texas is going to get open right here. But because Drini's not going to put a yellow zone over here, he has to go over here with his user. So really what we're doing here is we're just reading the user. If the user goes, whichever side the user goes, so you see here, user goes over here, it automatically, Henry's throwing this as soon as he cuts. You see here, perfect timing, throws it, easy touchdown. So that is uh, Henry's offense for the first half. And second half doesn't have it. He actually doesn't play as much offense in the second half, I don't think. And it's a little bit more run-based. But basically, Drini goes down and scores, and we are going to touch on this. So the one time uh, Henry actually gets stopped in this game is on this drive. And again, you'll see something just interesting to me um, as I just watch this back. So off rip here, we're going uh, first down and 10. Now, again, situation, uh, you know, first and 10, five minutes in the third, right? This is the first possession out of half. Now, the thing we want to hit on is where's the ball? In the middle of the field. Where do we want the ball? We want the ball in one of these hashes. So Henry's coming out. He's going to audible to an RPO. Notice that Drini actually changes defenses, and he goes to nickel 3-3 three, three cub, which is a different style of defense than nickel 3-3-5 three, three, off. A lot of different coverages that you can do from it for sure. So second and four. Another thing uh, that I think could be true, and we'll have to watch the game against TJ to really see this, but here he goes to trips. Okay, so why would he go to trips here? In my opinion, the reason why is because we get we know that he's in this, and it's a man aligned defense, so we know these guys are all going to come over here to the, to the right side. So what it does is it puts us in a position that if this guy blitzes, you now have basically – Two on one basketball over here to the left. If he does not blitz, they'll never get pressure. And then you could have something like uh, streak, post, a little underneath check down, and you have basically a high low in the middle of the field off that. So we'll take a look at the route combination here. I'm pretty sure it's exactly what I said. The purpose of this being a flat and not a streak is because this guy can't be in a third or typically won't be in a third. He'll either be manned up on the tight end, he'll be in a half, which a half will never cover the corner, or he'll be, th those are really the two main ones. So as we look at this, you see right here, see how he backs up? Half, this is a curl flat. Automatically here, the ball should go to the corner. But look where the user goes, see how the user runs with that? So this is a great read by Drini. This is open. This is 100%, 100, 100 times out of 100 wide open. Now, what Drini's doing a lot of, he's using a lot of curl flats. You could easily throw the ball in the flat, but as you see, Henry Smart, user vacates the middle of the field. We have this little nice high-low in the middle of the field where our little backside in route is going to be wide open, and we're able to take the easy yardage. Okay, so we accomplished a couple things there, but it's kind of interesting that he went to trips tight end, and then now you see here he's going to go right back to it. So this is obviously an intentional game plan for this situation. When Drini's wanting to come out in a man aligned defense, this is kind of Henry's scheme. And basically here we have a streak, a flat, a drag, 
a post, and then I don't know what the running back's on a wheel. Yeah, a wheel. Okay, so let's take a look here real quick at the adjustments. We have a third. We have a third. Not sure what Gronk's in, but as you can see, he really just, I mean, and this defense is not. You can also tell Drini does not want to be in this defense. He's kind of going to it because 3 3 5 odd just wasn't getting it done. And there's really, from an adjustments perspective, fairly limited. So here we get an interesting combo out of Henry. And again, these are the questions that I have. Like, why call this play? I'm just not sure what we're looking for here. I'm not really sure. Like, obviously, we're looking for this C route to the right side. I'm pretty sure this is out of smash return. So he hot routed this C route, okay? So a couple things about that C route. It's a little deeper. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, a little deeper uh, than the standard one. So essentially what we're trying to do is if this guy is in a third, because we're on this hash mark, this running back will clear that out, and this guy will be open, okay? I don't understand is we don't give ourselves any quick option. So if we get blitzed here, I guess we throw to the running back, which would be covered if this guy takes him. So let's look at this post snap. All right, so post-snap. So Drini kind of throws us for a loop here by using this right side of screen linebacker and just so happening to be right over the top of the running back. So he sends one, two, three, four, and his user being five or six, actually. So he sends five with a user. Now look at this. He's going to cover here. Now you see this guy's free. So again, we don't give ourselves any quick option. We do have this on the back side, but we're rolling into a contains. And what Henry's trying to do, and he does have him open, is hit this. But I just felt like for that, I'm not sure what. I think Henry was probably thinking that he was going to get a coverage look from Drini, and that was probably the, the reason. But again, I'm just not sure why, why call that specific play there. Um, now we go to double post. So a lot of quick reads here. We've got the flat. So, again, this is where Henry's expecting pressure. Now Drini um, plays a little more coverage base, but still open. There's a lot of stuff open here. Uh, and, again, we get these random bumpings. He's going to have to take this underneath in. So now you would really want to throw your post, but you see how the post gets just absolutely bumped out of its face. And now we're in a 4th and 14 situation. So really two plays in bunch that did not look great. And I couldn't understand why for sure we were calling them. And now we go to this. Uh, why would we call this play? Well, again, we have the ball on the left hash mark here. So we know that we can hit this corner to the corner if he's in a third or a quarter on that left side. Uh, typically, this guy won't be in a cloud, even though Drini did back him off. And then if the user runs over here, then because we wheel this guy, it pulls the third It'll, like if this guy's in a quarter, it'll pull him. If this guy's in a third, it'll pull him. And we can hit that right in that little window. So we give ourselves a lot of options. What Drini ends up doing is he sends one, two, three. Um, and then this is a cloud at the sticks. These are clouds at the sticks. So he protects the sticks. Uh, quarter here for the, I don't know what that's for. And you see, I mean, he just gets pressure. Running backs coming wide open over the top. Ah, it's just the routes were just not. When you play this defense out of three three this year, it's uh, there's just a lot of bumping that occurs. You see, this is a crazy shed. It's just a lot of bumping that occurs, and essentially we got. I think we literally have two quarters, a man up on the corner route with this guy kind of playing the sticks, and then we have. Essentially, the user is either going to have to go here or go here or just stay right in here. So all in all, it's, it's good defense. I think had Henry had just a little more time, he probably has. I mean, you can see the running back is going to be wide open because these are quarters. They're not half zones. Mm. So he does end up getting stopped. I feel like it was honestly a drive where the more I watch that back, the more I feel like Henry really just – I don't know. Again, it's where I say, like, I'm not, I'm just not sure why he called what he called there. So now um, Henry comes back in this situation. So Drini goes down, scores. All of a sudden, 
this is a ball game. This is a ball game for sure. So Henry needs to score. So he's going to go back to his bread and butter out of this against three three five Cub. Is it's this right here, and we have a we have a, a clear out streak up the middle. Okay, then we have a little like kind of cross that we're really wanting to throw that in this pocket or our underneath drag in this pocket. And then because of the numbers advantage that we have from trips, we're able to play this little game here. So look where the user, you see how the user has to go right. So now all this, and then you see a triangle and square open. He ends up checking it down to the back who he had. Again, he had that at the very beginning. So that's the second time he's done that with a running back flat route where he just takes that check down late into the read progression. All right, next play, going to wide trail, um, wide side. So now we're going for a bomb, and that's terrible. <laughs> so uh, this is a bomb play, and essentially we have this flat. Now, again, I talked about this before um, when he ran this play. This flat's open. It's 100% it's open, but Henry's not really looking here. Uh, in my what he's really looking at is he's looking at this corner in my opinion you need to at least peak the space because in this situation I mean he might have but I just don't know I mean you got to hit this route I just don't think he's looking for it had he been had he peaked it this is open this is a first down instead he's kind of I think almost to a degree has tunnel vision on this or this and so because of that he gets screamed at he has to throw the ball away, even though he has three wide open players. And again, obviously, it's easy to say that from my position, just watching the tape. But I think that's an example of, and something that I've been guilty of as well, where you want to look at your routes when they actually get open. Like, what's going to be open first? What's going to be open first? You want to look at them when they're open in the windows. So here we go to Dagger. Um, he's going to send five out, which kind of surprised me because of so much pressure from Drini. But now we're running Dagger. Now, again, we're on the right hash mark. So because we're on the right hash mark, this crosser could put... I don't think this crosser gets open. And I'm, I'm totally wrong. I guess it does. Could pass lead. Pass leads back. Or he ag aggressive catches back to the ball. And here again... Uh, just, yeah, I mean, just kind of, uh, just kind of goes back to dagger. You can tell daggers, probably his, one of his favorite plays. Um, like when he's in situations where he doesn't know what to call, I feel like this, he, he's going to call dagger. You haven't seen a lot of double corner and I feel like double corner would be open in this defense a lot or not in this specific one, but in the 335 odd specifically. Now here, this is a Wesley combo. Now you see he's doing this, or at least I just saw Wesley run this a lot. But again, we talked about this before. What's the purpose of this? I'm not sure. We're running this with the ball in this hash mark. We're trying to throw the ball over here uh, to the corner. I'm really not 100% sure why we're doing it this way. This is an outside third. So this corner... Yeah, I mean, this is just mm, almost a D-line pick right there. You just, Henry does not like this defense, <laughs> at least right right now. But again, like I said, they bump a lot. And you see right here, the peak read is open. That's why you always peak your streak. And I want you to take a look at what happens. So, uh, again, what I say, when he needs a play, what's he going to go to? He's going to go to dagger, streak, crosser. Backside in, drag. Why? I'm not really sure. It's it's hard to. Th I just think it's. I think it's just a play that gives him the most amount of options for the longest amount of time and allows him to block a running back. You see here, uh, right off the bat, you see that little right there. At that point, right there, this is a touchdown because the beauty of dagger is it's not a streak that's going to run itself into coverage. It's going to fade away from coverage. So you see, see how it's kind of fading away from that third? And Henry is able to hit it over the top for a touchdown in a really big spot, like a really, really big situation. He had to have that touchdown, or at least had to get a good drive, and he was able to do that. And really from there, um, Drini goes on a really long drive. I think he ends up having to settle for three. 
and then Henry here in this situation. Now, with this situation, four minutes on the clock. If you get three, you go up two scores. And I love this. This is this is kind of what I was talking about, that wide trail play. So if you just take a look at this combo here for a second, you're going to see we get double corner, right? But, uh, and again, this is the only, I think, the second time he's called this play. But what's interesting is that, again, we're anticipating this guy is going to be on a third. So we're just going to pop this guy to the flat. And again, this is just a peek to the flat. But off rip, he's going to snap this ball. Okay, snap the ball. Now, uh, this also plays a little bit into the running back uh, being a little Texas pattern because the flat will pull out any uh, purple zone that this guy might have been on. So it kind of opens up a, a nice route. Again, primarily designed to keep the user in this little box. You don't want to give the user freedom to get out on these other outside islands. You want them to have to pay for that. So you always really want to have, in my opinion, a route somewhere in these this area of the field. Now that being said, Henry takes his flat. So right off the snap, his eyes look here. He sees that. This ball is going here 100 times out of 100. And you see this is a great just, I mean, look at this. You're able to cut up field, and you got an easy, easy yard. He, that's what really could have happened um, with that trail with that trail flat route had he been looking for that. So you see there, I mean, it doesn't take long, just a quick peek out there. Now we're running the ball. Purpose of that, tick, 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 okay? Henry's just got to get a field goal. If Henry gets a field goal, he goes up by two possessions, and he's basically uh, almost guaranteed that he's going to win the ball regardless of an uh, onside kick. Again, here, look at this. Look who's open. Same thing. We have a third. They're not respecting this route. So I just don't understand. You see, throw this right now. Throw this right now. <laughs> and again, he's he's got to be looking for this. Maybe his progression is just, I'm just not, as I look at this, where are the where's the progression? Are we looking here first? He's probably looking up here. And I just think it's bad timing because this is open now. We want to take that and get an easy yard. Let's see if he ends up throwing it. See here, still open, still open. Mm, see, that kind of tells me the progression is drag to trail to this. And this is really your last read. That's number four. And, yeah, I mean, it's open. It's a good read. It's it's a good read. It's a little bit late. Again, it's kind of, you know, just a little bit late on both sides. Now we're chewing. And guess what? We're in field goal range. Boom, and now we only have really one objective offensively, and that is to take Drini's timeouts away from him and, and get three. Honestly, there's really – I mean, yeah, you want to get seven if you can, but I don't even think there's a reason to pass the ball here. And you'll see here just a simple run, trying to get yardage. He ends up getting some really nice runs here on this. But anyway, let me back – let me get back up to where we were. So you see here, again, a little inside zone. And then second and 10. Now here, I think he passes, and we see that same idea. Now we're going to use a zig. Now why would we use a zig instead of a flat? Because the adjustment Drini might make is he might man this guy up again. So now we're going to use a zig, which is a man-beating route, to be able to attack this if this guy blitzes off the edge. So at the snap, we're really looking over here. Snap, okay, now, the second he sees that, this is dead. We don't really wanna throw this. We wanna move away from this. And now we're looking over here, okay, because that's our main uh, concept side. And really what we're keying on is the tight end. So you see here, Drini, as you see, third, this guy's clearing that out. This corner gets pressed, and it's really going to not be a good read, but the short corner ends up being wide open. Or I guess we streaked our one, I'm sorry. And then uh, our other corner is able to clear out the third. And this is this is 100, 100 times out of 100 going to be a completion. Really nice throw and uh, catch from Henry. And this pretty much wraps up the game. Uh, we're going to see a, a couple runs here, just mainly trying to take uh, TJ's time or uh, Dreamy's timeouts. Does he go to a pass here? I think he does. 
This one of my favorite red zone plays, this little hitch right here will hold, like let's say one of these guys on a cloud, it will basically hold zones on this little grid, and then you can throw this over here. Um, he goes five out. So what he's probably anticipating, I bet you if I was in Henry's shoes, I really just want to hit this read. I want to hit this read right here, and I want to go, I want to dive down and take the rest of the game. So off rip, he's looking here. Okay, user's here. I can't throw here. So now I've got to either throw the tight end or I know this guy's running himself into coverage. But now the user's in a position where he has to choose. Does he take the wheel or does he take the underneath? So you see here at this point now, <laughs> you know, again, this is how Henry's eyes are moving is, is important. But this is open. This is a hundred percent open. If we take this, this is a dive down. It's a, it's easy. Uh, again, obviously the Madden game is moving faster, so you can't, you can't always see that. So he probably just assumes, oh, he's taking that. Now I'm looking right here, and really this is not a bad read. If you throw that right there, that's open. But Henry's smart. He ends up just taking this and trying to get upfield. Ends up not being able to get upfield, and now we have a third down and five. Now, third down and five, again, situational management here, really important. He uh, he really just ends up, Drini has one timeout left. If if uh, Henry, basically if Henry uh, runs the ball, it's going to take a timeout, which you'll see it does, and that's pretty much it. And then on the next drive, so now Henry's just going to take his three, so he's going to go up two possessions. And then next drive, Drini is actually going to go on a little bit of a drive, but then ultimately throw a pick in the red zone, and Henry is going to move on. So as we look at his offense, just want to do a little film study on what he calls, why he calls specifically offensively, and what the purpose of those plays actually are.